so much damage to take maybe two or three members from the side of the opponent. I think undoubtedly this is going to be a very exciting game. Number two as now we're going to be looking once again at the hero lineups from both teams. Currently, EVOS SG one game down here in the lower brackets, best of five. Will they be able to even things up? We will find out as we now return to the land of dawn. If you know EVOS SG, you know they're not going to give up. But at the same yes. time, Omega going to put on a fight for us. So here Welcome it is, the Land of Dawn Legends. game number two between Omega and EVOS SG. Omega on the blue side and EVOS on the red. Before we begin, I want to ask you a question, right? When we take a look at both compositions, who has the better early game? Because they both have assassins. We do have Sela on the Kagura as well as that Eve from the side of Omega, but now it's a little bit different, right? Because both Cho as well as Lolita are going to rely on that level four. I think personally, Omega is going to have the slightly better early game, simply because Iriotel comes online faster than Beatrix, and they have more damage overall in their team composition with the Lancelot as well as the durability of the Masha, but it is not by much though. Evo's SG can definitely take control of the map with this Grok and Lolita combo. Trying to invade here onto Ryzen's jungle. Doesn't seem like they got it. Uh, Sela in the mid lane though, stunning out Chaknu, putting up some damage. And we talked about this Ryzen uh, pick on the Lancelot. I, how do you think about it? I mean, whoa, in the meantime Ooh. though, Adamir just one flicker away, almost fell down there as first blood. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting question here with the Lancelot, whether or not it's going to be effective because yes, after all, nowadays Assassin's not quite as effective as before with certain exceptions like the Ling due to how well he can scale into the late game, but Lancelot doesn't quite have that same advantage, which means that Ryzen definitely needs to make something happen early on or the hero falls off quite quickly. I mean, the same can be said for the Benedetta, no? But of course, we'll see how it goes down back down to the execution because now we can see that the turtle has and already is starting to show in the Land of Dawn. And it seems like both teams want to be contesting for this. Yeah, putting out some damage here onto Omega just to, you know, put them back a little bit. Ryzen is at half health, so not in a great spot to contest this turtle here, but he does have those iframes. Renzio causing some trouble here in the back line, taking the damage. Nick, though, is in some trouble, has to flicker out, but the real manipulation gets cancelled back in there by JPL. And they manage to secure this objective for themselves. They go on and get one kill onto E2 Max. The wall chart comes in, so does the way of Dragon Doe, and they manage to get gear in that process. Sela, extremely low. Chagnu looking for the kill. The flicker will get him that one. Wow. What just happened? What just happened in that particular team fight? It just seemed like trades going after trades. One people, they understood their winning conditions and Chakri just goes into the back line, understanding the damage output that Sela can have and he got eventually traded out. Yeah, just a good identification by EVOS SG early on to be able to take out Omega in that fight, but they definitely overextended a little bit too far, and it ended up costing M a little bit more than they would like to. Looking at the items here, obviously still quite early in the game, but Adamir going to be going for that same build, skipping the boots upgrade for that BOD. It does look like Nick is going to be going for the same item as well. Yeah, I mean, right now, how you said that they had the better early game advantage and looks like they're pressing it around. Real world manipulation coming out. Put out to Sela. JPL knocked out as well, taking the damage. Way of the Dragon will be able to take completely good care of him to put him down. Man, a really good engage there from the side of Omega, being able to get more pickoffs on the board. And this is so different to game number one, right? We saw them kind of go head to head, but this is Omega leading once again, but now this time in terms of kills. Unfortunately, they haven't been able to trade it for objectives, so we'll see what happens as it is still under five minutes. Yeah, even though they don't really get a lot of objectives from this though, Omega are definitely very happy with this because again, their main win condition is going to be on Kelra. As long as they continue to give space to this Irritale, it will scale up to the point where it becomes an absolute monster in the late game. Watch out though, Chaknu. Yeah, right now they are aggressing in the jungle as well. E2 Max is the first to go. Evo's SG getting those pickoffs as they need. And right now they have the advantage to take this turtle. It is finally, well, one objective again, adding to their name. Chaknu hanging out in the vicinity here. Ryzen using that iframe to escape the damage, but it's not enough to be able to contest this one.
One thing that I noticed about the emblems is that Ito Max has opted to go for that magic shock, whereas Sela doesn't go for that, right? He goes in for additional damage, and that kind of means that E2 Max will have a better time at scaling faster as compared to Sela, who is now focusing way more onto damage. Yeah, I think we could see that focus on damage from Sela, though, especially considering that he did go execute on the Kagura as well. We've seen before that Sela is able to bring back these games on the brink due to these big burst catches. But speaking of catching gear now, going to be the target of the real world oh. manipulation. Really nice juking to get out of that. This is why Gear plays the Benedetta. He is so, so slippery and it's so difficult to catch him out. But yeah, when you were speaking about Sela, he basically plays Kagura like an assassin. He just builds the damage, goes in the back line, bursts you down when he comes out of the bushes. Yeah, so it only needs one great engage either from Nick or even JPL to be able to make that happen. Omega really needs to be aware of this. And that makes sense as considering E2 Max has actually opted for that Purify spell. He's definitely aware of the fact that there's a lot of options for Evo's SG to be able to jump onto him when he pops that real-world manipulation. That's why the Purify is very good for countering things like the Wild Charge. But I do think that in that late game, Sela will prior be primarily prioritizing on this Eve instead of Kelra because it is very difficult to catch the Irritel in the Yin Yang overturn. And if they use the Kagura to burst down the Marksman, they can save Grok for other players on the side of Omega. And we've seen that sprint on Kelra as well was extremely devastating to the side of Evos, especially when he scaled into the later parts of the game. It was so difficult to catch him out. Hopefully that Wild Charge will be able to help pull off that in this game. But now the teams, they are setting up for this next objective just coming up. But you can see both Ryzen and Gear wanting to take it. Oh no, it seems like Chakno is going to look for engage. He actually goes back, but what is going to happen here as Ryzen gets caught? Ryzen manages to secure the turtle here, and Evo's SG, the Numenon Blast connects, Gear goes in, but they counter engage here, Kelra with the damage again, dodging and putting out those bullets, together with E2, Max's Railroad Manipulation, they take out two members of Evo's SG, Adamir trying to get a return kill here with the Debiros, but Kelra puts him down. One for three exchange there in that particular event, and it is going to be Omega winning that out. And once again, Kellera has successfully scaled into that mid game. I mean, 3 0 2 here on that Irithel, as compared to Adamir, who was still sitting to a 0 1 0. I think coming into this matchup, there was so much emphasis on that gold lane between Omega as well as Evil Singapore. We see time and time again that it is going to be either Kelra or even Adamir being that main core focus for both teams. But once again, like in game number two, a little deja vu moment that Kelra seems to be on top and it seems like Adamir is going to be falling behind. Yeah, very difficult for him here as Chaknu looking for Nyx. Gonna have a little bit of difficulty there while Renzi was actually dealing with the bottom side. Numenon Blast has to be used to save Adamir, but will it be enough to protect him from Ryzen who comes in with the Phantom Execution for a solid kill? Great rotation there by Ryzen and JPL unfortunately just burning that ultimate in time. What we was used wasn't able to protect Adamir anymore and in the meantime Way of the Dragon comes out onto Nick here, uses the Wild Charge defensively to disengage from that fight. Man, we were just talking about Adamir and another pickoff happen right after. I mean, 0-2-0 zero zero right now, he is not having a good time. And even if we took a little peek into the items, it did seem like Keller already had two items above Adamir, who only had one. Now Omega sitting at a 4,000 gold lead in the eighth minute. They are going to be circling around this next neutral objective in that first lore. I think based on the skirmishes we've seen, we have to talk a little bit about playstyle compatibility between these two teams because EVOS SG is a team that really likes to play this death ball style. They feel safest engaging when they are nearby each other, whereas Omega has a very good time controlling the map by splitting up fights and finding pickoffs, which is very disruptive to the style of fighting that EVOS SG wants to target which is why so far, Omega is able to control the flow of these battles a lot better. Yeah, Omega tried to go to, for the Conceal play there, but they found Nick and decided to call it off. But Evo's SG, I think they recognize what you're saying, Staffa. They're trying to group up and get those huge team fights because that's what their draft is also geared for. The huge Numenon Blast, the Wild Charge, that's what we were expecting. Instead, we're seeing the reverse. Changnu with one way off the Dragon, 
comboed with that real world manipulation to be able to pull off that team fight. Evos SG looking to handshake this conceal play again going on to Changnu, but likewise they could not find the opportunity. Yeah, both teams are still dancing practically at this stage, looking for engages. Both teams can't find the opportunity. But like we mentioned before, it is going to be Renzio here being able to get a lot of pressure in that top side, maybe even taking that turret for himself. Gear is trying to kind of duplicate that problem, but the issue is Gear can, can't do that all day long, right? If they want to be contesting for those objectives, that's going to be Omega in the upper hand because Masha doesn't have the retribution spell. Yeah, especially when you consider as well that gear is needed for EVO's SG's team fight, and Renzio is not. So Omega are very comfortable just leaving him on the other side of the lane, but the fight already results in Selah getting taken out way of the dragon. Gonna find JPL as the wild charge connects onto Kelra. Adamir jumping forward with the shotgun. Gonna be able to finally find this Irritel, but here comes the real world manipulation. Already cancelled by JPL, but it is too late to save Nick from the clutches of Chak Nu as Renzio even wins his one. B1, they also pick off the double kill. Omega in full control. Clean, oh. clean game. Yeah, that was very unfortunate. I mean, just so one. They found takes one by one by one. And I think at some point it just felt like Evos was giving up. I mean, they just tried to distract them. And now Omega has the Lord in their hands. They're going to be able to start pushing up on these lanes. I mean, a 3 for one trade. Three members for the side of Kelra. You know, if we don't talk about the specifics, maybe it was worth it. But it's not. But maybe it was worth it. I mean, Kelra, he was sitting at a 3-0-4. What was his KD in the first game? I don't even remember. But he's always been able to be such a very reliable gold laner, dishing out the damage when his team needs it the most. And now we're going to take a look at the instant replay here by TikTok. When that team fight went down, the real world manipulation opened up. It did so much damage. It was able to get cancelled, but unfortunately, it was just too late. And now we can see that the Lord is going to be marching in that top side, and this might be, once again, the final stand coming in from EVO Singapore. It's gonna be quite difficult for them. Although Gear has the highest damage, the rest of Omega are definitely in a much better position. They're now looking for the conceal play. Wild Charge gonna miss entirely, and here comes the real world manipulation. Oh, the knockout onto Nick and JPL, and now they are in some serious trouble here. They managed to secure two kills already. Omega pressing their lead here. Evo's SG busy defending the, from the Lord here, and now they have the opportunity to counter engage. Tries to go onto Kara, but Sela gets put down instead, and Gear follows as well. They are dropping one by one, and Adamir is next. Ryzen tries to get the kill onto it, but it's going to be Renzio coming with the killing blow. Unfortunately, a complete wipeout on Evo's SG. A wiped out here for the side of Evo's SG. Omega, they are going very heavily onto that bottom turret. It does seem like Nick is going to be spawning as well as JPL, but Omega. They don't want to close it. They want to play the discipline game. They are going to be retreating and looking and maybe buying time for that next Lord to spawn. Part of me does wonder whether or not this is a little bit too safe from Omega considering that yes, while Evox SG is respawning, it is only going to be JPL and Nick for quite a while. I feel like they could have pushed a little bit further, but I think they were just lacking the minion ways to do so. So very good discipline from the Filipino team right now. They want to make sure they could secure this game to victory and not give Evox any chance to retaliate. It really looks like they're suffocating out of this. I mean, they're being suffocated out of this. At this point, Omega is just pushing their lead again and again. 45k up against 36. That's a good 10k gold ahead of them. That's comfortable lead, right, Scrubby? Comfortable, comfortable lead. And as you can see there, Ryzen already securing that BOD for just a little bit of additional damage. Understanding that they are leading, it isn't too expensive of an item. But once again, both teams are going to start setting up for this next Lord. The question is, how will Evo Singapore maneuver around the situation? How are they going to set up? Because every time they go for an engage, it just is able to get spun around to the hands of Omega with that real-world manipulation that always works like a charm. Typically, when you find yourself behind at a 9k deficit, it becomes almost impossible to make the comeback unless your opponent makes a massive mistake. And I don't think Omega is going to be putting themselves in that sort of position right now. Already on the Lord, going down to half HP, Evos are in position. But Chaknu and Renzi were just zoning them.
them out in the back line. Yeah, they can't contest this gear. It's not here, but Nick has kicked down way back in by the way of the Dragon, and they go in deep for Sela as well. Manages to get and finish him off. Adam here in some trouble. Can he get out? Numenor Blast is building to it. Manages to stun out Renzio, and they do get the counter kill onto him instead. Kalra comes in with the bullets, doesn't manage to save that kill gear. Coming from the back now, trying to make the best of the situation. And I think Evo's SG, they fell, got a return kill here, Constellation Pride, oh. but JPL is in some trouble. They trade out for Kelra, so Evo's SG is still trying to defend his gear, buying as much time as he can in the back line, rides and chases him down. Iframe's not going to be able to save him. Can we take this moment to appreciate Adamir, the way that he was able to just outmaneuver everything that was thrown at him, the last snipe that came in onto Kalra that eventually sealed the deal. He was so behind from that early game up until this moment, but he is still able to stay relevant in the game. A 4-3-0 KDA does not reflect the amount of impact he has as he was able to buy so much time for the side of Evil Singapore. Oh, the wall Ooh. charge and the flicker by Nick. Ooh, they are fighting right now, but Gear is the one to go down first. Adamir, right? and claims his life and they are going to move on to the court and clean up this match 2-0. to zero. Match point for the Singaporean representatives. This is the last chance that they have to be able to come back understanding that Omega has already swept a 2-0 to zero in this matchup. A very handy 